Hey guys, I've been playing a bit of Monument Valley lately. Um, my nine-year-old son's a bit crazy about it, uh, so I really like the style of it. Oh, I bought it myself, I've been playing it a little bit, and I thought we'd have a go at creating a render in Monument Valley style. So this is what I came up with earlier on. It's only a real quick one. We see if you want to put more detail in it, you go for it by all means. I'll kind of show you the building blocks of how to do it and how to get a render out, something like this and then you take it and run with it. So, let's get going. So that was my file, let's create a new one. So, for the, for the large part, I'm using all these kind of predefined objects in Cheetah and I'm not really changing them that much. And I'm generally working at scale. So, at the scale that they kind of come out. So first thing I'm going to do is get a box, I'm going to collapse a mesh by double clicking and then I'm going to put a ring cut using X there another one there, another one there one in the middle, I'm clicking and pulling to lock them to the middle so I click and then pull away and it locks it to the middle I'm going to go into top view which I have keyboard 7 into edge mode up here and I'm pressing L for loop select I'm going to select these two loops here jump into the transform tool, I have set to T and pull these edges out to be just in line with this grid section here. I'm going to loop select these two. L again for me. Scale these two. If you haven't got all the shortcuts set up that I've got set up, uh, as ever, watch my tutorial on shortcuts. If not, use Control Click. They're all available. Everything's available to you there. Okay, so back into my camera view, and I'm going to put a few more ring cuts in. One there. One there one there, I'm clicking and pulling away again then I'm going to jump into uh, polygon mode I'm going to use the selection tool, I'm going to select these edges here or these polygons should I say here like so and then I'm going to press E for extrude or control click if you've not got the shortcut set up click and pull that up I get this kind of castle style thing going on okay so that's done in terms of that object. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Now, I'm just going to set on snapping, which I have set to raster, and I'm going to put the raster width at 1. I might play around with that in a little while, but that will do for now. Then I'm going to throw on another box, which is directly over the top. I'm just going to click and pull, and it's going to move it and lock it. So that raster snapping will now lock at 1 kind of block movement, so just at the sides of these blocks which is really cool for constructing this kind of thing, so I'm copying and pasting that little turret there or castle thing, whatever you call it, I don't even know and basically just go along and duplicate these, kind of construct construct what you want, put them together if you play Monument Valley maybe try and create something that already exists, if not um, just make something up Right, I'm going to throw stairs in now, and this may not work with my raster setting, but let's try it. So I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. I'm going to pull that out here and set it into that middle. Okay, and it does fit in there. Well, they are quite big steps. A lot bigger than what I want. So I'm just going to play with these settings up here on these steps. So maybe I'll have 15 steps and let's have a look so I'm pulling that into probably 0 0.1 on the step height and then maybe 0 0.1 again on the step depth maybe 0 0.15 something like yeah that's not too bad so we may find that that doesn't quite snap that raster kind of level of 1 is probably a bit too much. If you do the maths and you multiply 15 by the 1, it's going to be over, isn't it? So if we had 10 steps, would that be right? Let's try it. Yeah. If you want to play about with the maths a lot, you by all means do that. Um, and then I'm going to collapse the mesh on this stair by double clicking it. I'm going to put a ring cut down the middle. Click and pull. Click and pull again. Click and pull again. Um, I'm just going to throw a few materials into the scene 
So I was working with a kind of purpley kind of kind of a bright pinky purpley colour. Um, let's just throw that into a few places. Interesting. It's actually as I'm throwing that on. Let me just undo that. It's actually remembering which polygons I've got selected. So let's just do it in object mode instead. If you can see that visual feedback that happened there, it wasn't, wasn't the best. So coming into this stair again in polygon mode, I'm going to ring select those two. And I'm going to just scale that out like so. I'm going to add a new material. And I think the stairs I were kind of a ready, off ready colour like this. Throw that onto those polygons there. And then you go selection, invert selection. I'm going to add a new material that is a kind of pale pinky colour, which I'm going to add onto that edge there. And then just just start duplicating things and moving them around and seeing what you get. So like so, maybe you want your block to be a lot higher. I've got a height of five on that one there. And maybe we're gonna pull this one up and this one up. And just build a scene. Um, build a whole scene. You can obviously put a lot more details into this. I'm just showing you how to do it quickly. We're at six minutes, so let's do the little render setup. So first thing, we're using the orthographic camera because we're rendering in isometric mode. I'm going to use an angle of about 40 degrees. I'm just panning that down. Zoom it into a level that you want. And then for the background, I actually create the background in Photoshop. I'll open it in preview. All it is is a, a gradient from a darker purple to a lighter purple. And we've got some squares just on, a, on an angle. A little bit of different colour for these stars. So I drop that in. I think I'm working at about 1500 pixels wide in my camera settings. Let's load that background in. Let me just hit the render button on that, make sure we're actually behaving. Yep, we are. Okay, so we're kind of starting to get there. You can see that there. You see on mine, it's, it's kind of a bit more zoomed out. I've got a few more different colors going in, obviously. The whole scene is a little bit more busy. Uh, we can do that. It really is just a case of just duplicating things up, moving them around, maybe making some more elements. And just fill your scene. So I've kind of messed up the camera angle here, which isn't the best thing to do. I, I would recommend that you work with the perspective camera to position things and to just get your scene going and then keep your camera generally locked down at that 40 degree angle there we go interestingly just going to remove this background it's misbehaving a little bit and drop it back in yeah it doesn't like that i'm guessing that's something to do with the retina i might be completely wrong um, it is rendering fine though, so that doesn't matter. Okay, for the lighting, I went with the really easy method of position this. You kind of find that you have to really, really play around with your camera to to get to see what you need to see. I've messed up that angle again. I've really got to stop doing that. So we'll go on a rotation forty. So, however you have it, that rotation fork is probably a bit wrong actually. I'm going to go 55, minus 40, yeah that's kind of alright. Let me move that one down. It's just about setting these kind of things up right, okay, so for the lighting. Simple one really, skylight. Um, play with the time on the skylight to get your render settings best. 
So you find that the skylight casts these hard shadows, which is sometimes not needed, and they're not really in Monument Valley as a much softer shadow. But that said, the kind of tone you get from the skylight is really nice for this kind of thing. Um, and it, it works really well. You can turn these shadows off, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, just play with the date and time and things like that. And basically that's how you go about making a Monument Valley style render. Uh, go away and do your own. Uh, I'll do something cool. If you do anything cool, do send me an email or I'll put it on a Facebook page or anything like that. Don't forget there's loads more stuff over at mac3dsoftware.com. And what else did I want to say? Oh, um, there's a newsletter I do roughly about once a month. I just post all the new stuff that I've been doing, all the cool stuff that I've seen other people doing Cheetah 3D. If you want to be part of that, um, head on over to the site mac3dsoftware.com and sign up for that. And also subscribe to this on YouTube if you're not already. I'm always kind of making stuff. So have fun, guys, uh, and thanks for watching.